Today we're going to look at editing the row details of RAD Grid View with RAD Property Grid. RAD Property Grid is part of the Telerik RAD controls for Silverlight and WPF Control Suite for .NET XAML development. In this video, we're going to edit the row details of the RAD Grid View control with RAD Property Grid. Let's go ahead and jump inside of Visual Studio 2010 and get started. So here we are again inside of Visual Studio 2010. I'm going to go File, New Project. I'm going to select Visual C Sharp Silverlight, RAD Control Silverlight Application. And I'm going to simply give this the name RAD Property Grid Grid View TTV for Telerik TV. And press OK. We're going to host the Silverlight application in a new website and we're also going to be using Silverlight version 5. So once we press OK on that, we're going to see our project configuration wizard. I'm going to scroll down just a tad because we're going to be using grid view. I'm going to place a check here in telerik.windows.controls.gridview. And once I placed a check in that, you can see that the dependent references have automatically been added for us. The other references that we're going to need is going to be telerik.windows.controls.data. So I'm going to place a check in that, and once I placed a check in that, you can see that telerik.windows.data has been added for us. So I believe we have everything that we need, so I'm going to go ahead and hit finish. And once I hit finish, I'll scroll over just a tad, and you can see that it went ahead and it added the references for us. Telerik.windows controls, controls.data, controls.gridview, controls.input, and then telerik.windows.data. And if we also come back over here and look under our user control, then we can see that the Telerik XML namespace has automatically been added for us. So I'm going to go back under Solution Explorer. I'm going to collapse the references. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a class. So I'm going to go Add Class. And I'm just going to name this Employee. And inside of the employee class, I'm going to add four properties here as well as implement I notify property changed. So I'm just going to go ahead and fix that using statement. So we have our class here called employee that notifies I notify property changed. And if you hover over I notify property changed, you can see that this is simply here to notify clients that a property value has changed. We're going to be using this with the grid view and property grid. The first uh, item that I have added is called ID. Once we have ID, I then have another one here named name. Then I have one called date. And then finally I have a boolean that's called is available. And our constructor here is empty because we don't need anything here. And I've went ahead and I've added in just the boilerplate I notify changed implementation code. So now that that's in place, let's go ahead and navigate over to our main page.xaml and we're going to add in two column definitions. So as you can see here, I have the column basically split in half. I'm going to add a grid view here and here I'm going to add the rad property grid. So if I scroll back up just a tad, I'm going to paste in a rad grid view. So we have rad grid view. The column is set to zero. We're going ahead and giving it a name of rad grid view. Auto generate columns is going to be true. We're setting a margin and then the item source is just going to be binding. We can go ahead now and underneath our rad grid view we can paste in our rad property grid. So we're going to give this a name of property grid one. Its item is going to be binding to the selected item of our rad grid view one, which is defined right here. We're going to set a label column width, but then we're going to auto generate property definitions. We're going to set that to true. We can of course change that to false and we showed an example of that in the first video and then we're going to go ahead and set the grid.column to 1. So you can see in our designer window we have the grid here and then we have our property grid here. So let's jump to our code behind 
and add a little bit of code to make this all work. So I'm going to begin by right before my main page I'm going to add in an observable collection. I'll go ahead and fix that using statement. So we have an observable collection of employees and this is just going to be simply called grid items. Now that that's in place I'm going to come underneath my initialize component I'm going to add in a loaded event handler here. Underneath the loaded event handler I'm going to paste in a method called setup data which is going to generate us some dummy data here and in this instance you can see we're just using a random and we're just adding five items of our employee class that we created and then it's adding them finally to our observable collection called grid items. So back underneath our main page underscore loaded we're going to type in setup data then we're going to set our data context to be equal to grid items. Now that that's in place the only thing left to do here is to run it. So I'm going to run the application you can see we have our grid, we have five items listed here, then we have our property grid. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select one of the items here and you can see it's listed over in this screen. So the first thing that we may want to do is change the date. So I'm just going to change the date to the 28th and then I'll hit close and you can see that's reflected automatically here. I can go to my is available and I can toggle that and as soon as I toggle that it's updated in my grid. I can go ahead and I can give it a new ID if I wanted to. I'm just going to type in 12345 and that's been added for us. And Then finally if I wanted to change the name to something else then I could do that as well. So I hope this video helps and please tune in to tv.telerik.com for more videos and check out blogs.telerik.com for the latest news and announcements. Thanks for